some girls just want to watch World Cup. Jeff nailed another draft day. Nailed Late it. Top five has the 98. I got Jason more. Jason just loves some Kevin James. Fucking Kevin James. It's the history of bad. It's bad. It's the history of bad. It's so bad. It's the history of bad ideas. It's the history of bad. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun, and remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the History of Bad Ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 372. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Blake. I'm the power bottom. And I'm the intern, back to keep everything together after last week's debacle. It was a little bit of a debacle last week, Brian. You weren't here. Uh, Debacle was the, the best episode we had in a year. It was a fun episode. Whoa. It was. Uh, I will say... Those were it, your words, by the way. <laughs> Off the rails without me. Those were your words, not mine. Actually, it was intern Gary's words. Um, he actually did the synopsis last week. So, intern Gary, um, we, we're happy to have him when, he's, when intern Brian's out. Um, he was able to make time off of Teen Mom OG, so that was good. Um, he was able to come on the show. Um, so if you need to look at intern Gary, he's on Teen Mom OG. He wants Amber to live on a trailer with him on his land. So there you go. So can't stop loving her. I don't her. think any of that's true. No, no, he does. He wants her to live on his land in a trailer. Just saying. Okay. Just saying. So Jim knows this. Jim, wake up from Tech Mobile. Oh, okay. Okay. Are you playing Tecmo Bowl or Tecmo Super Bowl? It's just regular Tecmo Bowl. <laughs> yes. Tecmo Super Bowl. <laughs> Good Bowl's job. not Jim. available on the Switch yet. <laughs> I know. I'm waiting for Tecmo Super Bowl. Uh, let's see here. Do, does Tecmo Bowl on the Switch have the players? It has the older players, yeah. It's from the 88. Okay, so it does still have the play the original game. Okay, you can play Lawrence Taylor. Yeah, can you get cocaine for Lawrence Taylor too? Allegedly, not not. A, you need the uh, updated version for that. Oh, okay, okay. Allegedly, allegedly. Hey, Jeff, take your headphones out happened? and back in. Nope, nope, nope. I think it's Blake. Blake, you're loud over huh? there. What? There we go. Much better. Now we're good. Anyways. What? <laughs> well, you couldn't hear me the whole time? I don't know. Were uh-huh. you talking? What? Oh, stop. <laughs> go back. Start all over again. You missed it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So we are here. Jeff, much better. Thank you. Anyways, uh, we got a lot of stuff going on this week. This past week has been busy. Um, Especially as far as people passing away. My goodness. No kidding. Corey Leachman, Breath of Silence. The only, Breath of Silence. Uh, Cloris the Leachman. only upside mm-hmm. is not an upside. I, there's not a really a good word for it, but at least they were in their nine, like all like ninety five, ninety six. Like so, they deserve to die. Like they were thirty. <laughs> they deserve to die. Great, thanks, Brian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we did have somebody forty four. Yeah. Dustin Diamond was 44. Yeah. Does he... Uh, is that sad, Brian? It, it, they're, it's all sad. I'm just saying. It's... <laughs> At least they, they lived, lived a full life, most life. Uh, Dustin yes. Diamond's career lived twice as long as he did. Oh. Yes. Jeez. Wow. In syndicate. Um, <laughs> they did say that I guess he had a lump... Uh, for a pa- for a year, and he refused to go check it out because he was so afraid of what it was going to show. Well, uh, he was right. 
Because his mom passed away from cancer, too, pretty quickly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. One, one thing I've learned about this is I, as I, accro- you know, approach, you know, 30 for the second time mm-hmm. is that, uh, it, you don't delay getting things looked at. Correct. Correct. Um, so he passed away after, I think four weeks after being diagnosed with can- lung cancer. So well, I obviously had it longer than that. Correct. Correct. But. Um, he's an interesting guy because obviously there are some other issues outside of acting in that, but he always intrigued me because I would think like he would have like a Paulie Shore type career, like extra movies and that. And he never really did outside of Saved by the Bell money. He had a lot of problems. He did. He did. I'm not saying he didn't, but I was just kind of surprised that he wasn't in other films. Like that was my thing. Um, I'm trying to look kind of hard to be in other films when you're in jail and rehab constantly. He was in big fat liar, uh, saved by the bell, Hawaiian style, saved by the bell, the wedding, uh, wedding in Las Vegas. Um, she's out of control. Scavenger killers captured hearts. 2013 was a big year for him. He had two films. Uh, Jack Jane white is sick and twisted. Uh, tetherball, the movie, uh, oh, here we go. Big Money Rustlers with Insane Clown Posse. Oh, my. Just stop. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. And you wanted him and more? <laughs> uh, all wiped out? He had three films in 2013. Joker's Polter, uh, Joker's Wild. I've heard of that. Um, yeah. That was a game show, Jason. Oh, oh. They did in the 80s, and Snoop Dogg brought back a couple of years ago. He was so bad in that. Snoop Dogg in that. Oh, one. that's a, yeah. No, that's not good. Snoop Dogg's version of the Joker's Wild. So, And she's out of control. Can someone tell me who the lead actor is in that one from 1989? Get a dollar if you do. Uh, Off the top of your head. Sarah Michelle Gellar. It's a boy. It's Her a man. husband. Her husband. Tony Danza. Yeah, there Ryan you go, Billaby. Jim. You looked it up, you cheater. Jim oh, yeah, that's with, is it Amy Dolan's? Mickey Dolan's daughter was the daughter in that? Uh, no, that is, oh, wait a minute, hold on. Oh. Yeah, it is. You're correct. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wallace Shawn was in it. Matthew Perry. Look at you <laughs> well, go. It's easy when you look it up, Jim. Dick I mean. O'Neill. No, duh. <laughs> Dick O'Neill was in it. I don't know who he is. I don't either. Uh, I've been told that we own that movie on DVD. She's out of control? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Woo! It's high-classing it there. (laughs) Uh, Dick O'Neill played Froth movie The Jerk. He played who? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Frosty. I don't know who that is. And The Jerk. But he was in The Jerk. He was in the Taking of Pelham one, two, three, the original, the Mosquito Coast. He was Detective Kelly on oh, Barney Milk. Mosquito Coast. <laughs> How about that? If Amy it's Dolans good. was in, she's out of control. Did Mike Nesmith make a uh, short cameo appearance that's not credited? I don't know. As he has a habit of doing. Does he? Well, he has a habit of stalking Amy Dolans. <laughs> <laughs> be kind of creepy uh let's yeah. see another one uh who knew that we were having a she's out of control uh fan fest here today uh let's see jamie Torres, uh t-a-r-s-e-s producer and tv executive who uh was president of abc entertainment from 1996 to 1999 became the first woman to serve as a head of a network entertainment division uh she died this past monday at uh 56 mm. years old um, she had complications from a cardiac event suffered, uh, last fall. Uh, let's see here. Reason why, uh, she helped develop hits such as Friends, Mad About You, Frasier, News Radio, Caroline in the City, uh, as a ca- comedy programmer under network president, uh, Warren Littlefield at NBC. Uh, and then, uh, where was it here? Um, she also helped with Dharma and Greg, Sports Night, The Practice, um, when she was at ABC. So there you go. Um, yeah, pretty good stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, she went on to executive produce My Boys, Mad Love, Hawthorne, Mr. Sunshine, Happy Endings, Men at Work, Franklin and Bash, The Wilds, and The Mysterious Benedict Society, which debuts on Disney Plus this year. So, jeez, old Pete. So um, it was all downhill. Stop it. Uh, she served as a consultant on Jeff's show, uh, Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. You like that one, Jeff? I did like that one. So, hell of a career, though. So that was another sad one. Sorry, what was her name? I didn't hear uh, you say that. Uh, sorry, uh, Jamie uh, Torres, T-A-R-S-E-S. So, uh, 56 years old. Uh, and then Hal Holbrook died today. That son of a bitch. Um, you had him on your Deadpool for how many years? Uh, 12 years. <laughs> And then he, <laughs> 10 years later, he fucking dies. Come on! I thought he was 95. How dare, how dare him? I know. How d- I, thought he was, I thought he was 95 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> but he was, he was like, 85. <laughs> Thank you. 10 years ago. Is that how math works? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, also passed uh, Cicely Tyson. Yes. Yes. Um, shoot. Who else? I'm think, trying to think. John of. Cheney, uh, coach at longtime coach yep. at Temple. Yep. I thought he passed away a while back. Obviously not. No. D D's or D. Who? Ron Thompson. Who's that? Mm. He was a rapper and actor. Actor oh, okay. of Stab Master, He was in Stabmaster. He played Stabmaster Arson in CB4. <laughs> Stabmaster Arson. Uh, let's see here. I think that was it. I think that was all. I mean, that was a whole lot of people this week. And obviously, it's circle of life. People die all the time. But it's been, uh, uh, it's been a lot of people hit this year already. Damn it, Jay. I'm going back through our chat to see who we have. Mm-hmm. And I see R.I.P. Alexa. I'm like, what the fuck? And it was like, oh, you're talking about wrestling. Yes, yes, yes. Royal like, Rumble. I left my phone upstairs when the Royal Rumble was on, so I didn't have to keep checking my phone to see you guys talking back and forth about wrestling. Brian and I kept I, it small. Yeah, I, after I realized small. that Jason and I were the only two watching it, I switched to Twitter. <laughs> yeah, Brian and I talked on Twitter. <laughs> um, Brian, were you happy with Edge winning? No. <laughs> But Christian came back. Uh, Christian came did back. Christian help Edge Great. win. Great. I don't care. Did he help Edge win? A little bit. He was in the final four. But the good news is, it's helping the young up and comers to headline WrestleMania. I mean, Edge is only forty four or something like that. I mean, he's an up and comer. We got him. Dustin Diamond <clears throat> was dead at that age. So. Jesus. <laughs> You know if it you know if it helps. I did watch uh, the gang wrestles for returning troops episode. On it's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> the Roddy Roddy Piper cameo. Yes. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Quality. I, so that was that cricket was tally the man. First WWE event that I've watched all of COVID. All oh, the Rumble. Yes. And it really got you back into it, huh? <laughs> and it'll probably be the last one that I watch until I'll watch WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. But that'll probably be it. WWE. That was so bad. <laughs> WWE aims to disappoint. now, Then, now, forever. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I like the Rumble enough. Like, the Bianca Belair winning was awesome. I love the other yeah, Rumble. the women's Rumble was actually pretty decent. I thought the men's was good, too. Uh, we watched that a second time because my kids fell asleep before that one. But the Edge winning, I'm not upset, but I'm just bored. I'm like, put give it to somebody else. Give it, to- it was so predictable. As mm-hmm. soon as Orton walks out, you know that he's coming back at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So... I would have been fine. I'm not a Matt Riddle fan, but I would have been fine if he won just because it's somebody different. Damian Priest. Um, the final four outside of Chris. Has Edge ever won it before? Yeah, he's won it. Is he? Okay. Yeah. He won it 11 years to the day. Yep. Previous. Ooh. I love Christian. He's my he's one of my favorite of all time. So seeing him come back out there after retiring con- because of concussions was awesome. I was jumping up and down like, oh, yeah. my God. I mean, I don't know. 
unfortunately, he'll be drooling by the end of the year if he takes a kick from Goldberg or anybody. Um, yeah, that's it, another, like, yeah, let's, let's keep on running Goldberg. Like, let's <laughs> hey, bring are you back. guys reenacting your Twitter conversation? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. You know what, like, you brought it upon, upon us because you were talking about Roddy Piper in Sunny in Philly. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yep. it's all your fault, Blake. You'll know better than to talk wrestling, Blake. <laughs> uh, Jim, you winning in Tech Mobile? Uh, I I turned it off. What? Yes. Who's your? I was paying attention. I was paying attention to you guys talking about wrestling and just kind of lost interest and almost fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Who Who's your go to team in Tech Mobile? Uh, it depends on which which game it is. The original. Uh, the original, I probably I play the Bears. Mike Singletary is really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Who are you in Tecmo Super Bowl? The better version of Tecmo Bowl. Uh, that would be either. Well, if I just want to dominate, of course you play the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to make it challenging, then you play somebody like Phoenix. Oh yeah. Ooh, they were known as Phoenix then, huh? Yep. Ooh. Yeah some rough times that was jake Plummer in the second one right jim no that's pre-plumber was it pre-plumber? Yeah. who was it it was jim rosenbaugh and tom tupa were the quarterbacks oh god tom tupa <laughs> tom tupa oh god that, that was post bears career oh god no that was that was pre him being a punter in the nfl oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> did tom the backup tu- quarterback for arizona did Tupa ever start for the Browns? Like in their list of like 87 starters since they came back? I think Tupa yeah. was one of them. Oh, okay. Sorry, Sorry Blake. I think uh, they I think I, they auditioned him for punting, though. Yeah, I don't think he started for anybody. Because they have for, it was only a quarterback for like one year. <laughs> um Blake Didn't he compete with Jim Harbaugh for Bears quarterbacking time? <laughs> Sunglasses. That was Mike Obzak. Oh, Mike Tomzak. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong Michigan bastard. We can get to uh, what we're watched and all the other stuff here in a second, but since Blake is awake right now, I want to get him uh, interested. Blake, um, we had a Twitter poll of the week at Bad Ideas Podcast. It was your poll. Sure. It was your poll. When, yeah. When watching the West Wing, what type of oh. wings do you like? <laughs> um, the West Wing, Wing fanatics did not like this one. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, did we go from the most voted poll to the least no, voted No, 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 no. We had like 40-something still. We did not have 1,100. <laughs> but the way, and uh, the funny thing is, Kev at Cincinnati Explorer, I, I even tw- called him out and said, hey, give this to all your West Wing fanatic fans, because that's how the last people, you know, start vote on the Aaron Sorkin poll. Uh, no one responded. Uh, they don't like us <laughs> <laughs> with this joke. <laughs> They take West Wing very seriously. Uh, let's see. Uh, when watching West Wing, what type of wings do you like? Uh, garlic, buffalo, barbecue, or liberal? Uh, in last place, 6% garlic. I could see that. I could see that. Um, and then winning 44% to 25% because there was a two-way tie for second. Buffalo beat out barbecue and liberal. So liberal <laughs> almost had it. Liberal almost had it, but... Uh, I voted for liberal. <laughs> so there you now, go. Now, is it because our humor is too highbrow or is it <laughs> too lowbrow? Yes. I don't think we've been accused of being too highbrow. <laughs> so uh, there you go, Blake. We got your poll out there and you pissed off people. <laughs> I'm glad I'm making friends. <laughs> and influencing people. Did we at least get more one-star reviews from it? You know what? Let me check. Let me check. Uh, Brian, what did you watch this week? Give us some quick things here while I look that up. Uh, let's see. I watched the movie Palmer on Apple, the new Justin Timberlake movie. How was that? Uh, it was very good. Okay. Uh, I didn't expect it to be as uh, emotional as it was, mm-hmm. but it was it was very good. I wouldn't be surprised if he wins, wins some awards for that. It uh, was, it was very good. That is 
uh, that film helped Apple have the lo- uh, largest uh, viewing audience this week of streaming on their Apple. Is it Apple TV? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. Yep. What was the movie called? Plumber? Palmer. Oh, Palmer. Sorry. Not Plumber. <laughs> Uh, we've, we've had no other one star reviews. Thank you, everybody. No, I'm so disappointed. So, uh, maybe one day we'll be in the archive review that our, uh, Dr. Desmond does out in California. I'm just saying our most educated listener. Uh, you can always, uh, give us some five star reviews when you're listening. Just click on the stars and that, uh, helps us out. Give us a good review. Don't give us one star reviews. Nobody's eating on this podcast. <laughs> Uh, Brian, anything else you watch? Um, yeah, but come back to me cause I'm try- trying to remember it. Cause I did, I've watched <laughs> a ton of stuff over the last two weeks. <laughs> he had a vacation and he can't remember what he watched, <laughs> but that means it was a good vacation. Uh, or he, du- or he dug into the bourbon su- supply. Actually, uh, I have not, uh, yeah, I uh, I took a spell off. Ah. Uh, Jim. Uh, holidays hit me uh, a little heavy with the uh, Kentucky wine, <laughs> so <laughs> laying off a bit. How many days are you at without alcohol? Uh, just like four, because I had oh, a glass okay. on Sunday. Because we we had. Uh, we finally uh, finished up Christmas with the families mm-hmm. this weekend, so I did have one glass of bourbon on Sunday. Gotcha. But prior to that, it was nine days, ten days. Okay. Nice. Jim, were you doing dry January? Yes, and now I'm nursing a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Nothing like waiting till February first. Don't don't ask him what he did after No Nut November. <laughs> oh come on, man. It was like cobwebs all over his house. It was nasty. Ah, <laughs> uh, we're classy. Uh see ja- <laughs> we've always been highbrow. <laughs> uh the only people to give us a highbrow comedy rating is Terrence and Philip. That's right. <laughs> so, Jim, were you too busy getting drunk, or did you were you able to watch stuff? Uh, well, it was bowling night last night, and we just and we got moved lanes three times because they kept on breaking down. Mm-hmm. So instead of actually concentrating on bowling, I just got really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Come yeah. on, get happy. Uh, so, mm. so Jeff, did you watch anything <laughs> this week? Um, I watched WandaVision, episode oh. four. Did I saw that three times this weekend. You liked it that did much? You, did you find something that you missed in the first two times you watched it? I don't think I did. I was just with people who hadn't watched it yet. And I'm like, I'll watch it again if you need, if you want to watch it now. And yeah. so it was so, damn yeah, good, so wasn't it? It was. I, I all the people that were complaining about, oh, this is dumb. It's going nowhere. It's too slow. I hope it paid off for them. But oh, there's nothing like a, a slow burn for a great payoff, and it's just going to get better from here. I mean, I'm just like. Oh, I love this anticipation of what's coming next. And, you know, that's why I don't like when they dump the entire season at once. Yeah. Because this anticipation and this thinking about it for a week before the next episode is is what makes quality viewing, in my opinion, or helps helps uh, lead to some quality viewing. And we've been, um, you know, let's be real. We've been here for, you know, this show episode has been out for. Five days now, one division. Um, let's just say it came out on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Some small spoilers here. Um, Scarlet Witch is uh, she's not in a good place right now. She's not. <laughs> what I don't know what makes you think that. 
Mm-hmm. She's in the best. She's in a place of her making. Come on. Are we allowed to talk spoilers? Yeah, I think yes. so. I think so. Jim, have you Was seen that? Yes. Okay. Jim saw it first. Okay. Yeah, I know. I, he saw it first and posted it, and then I had to hurry up in the next three days to watch it. Uh, how about Zombie Vision, man? When it, when, it clicked, when it just looked over, clicked at him that way, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, Vision looking was, like death. That was actually scary. Uh, I will say that uh, there's been a trend growing on Twitter that they're trying to get Kat Dennings' character and Jimmy Woo, uh, Randall Park's character, uh, to do an X-Files-type uh, show set in the Marvel Universe. With them just going around doing uh, weird, uh, uh, investigating weird cases. I'm down. X Files Do type yeah. investigations they, in the MCU universe. Yes. They did one episode with those two together, and already people are clamoring for They more. were awesome. It was great. It was pretty good. They, they did a really good job. I, I really wish that uh, all those people that we read the one star reviews that Bish and complained about it last mm-hmm. week, I wish I could. Remember what their names were in their posts, so I can go back and see what they if they changed their minds or updated their uh, uh, review. So there's five episodes left, and like Jeff said, it's just going to get crazier. I think. Um, I, I love seeing Kat Dennings' character back. Uh, that was awesome. Um, did you see that uh, Jimmy Choo? He uh, was able to do his uh, card trick finally. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Woo. Card. Sorry, Jimmy Woo. Not Chew. That's Chew's, isn't it? <laughs> Jimmy Chew. <laughs> so, uh, anything else, Jeff? You thought about it? Anything you want to talk about? about uh, the yeah, there's, I, I, I know there's been people uh, out there on you know the the places that uh, that uh, recap these things, mm-hmm. and like everybody is anticipating. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but the the, the head of Sword or the acting head of Sword mm-hmm. is going to be. A bad guy. Ah, uh, the one that took over when everybody vanished. Yeah, I don't know because doesn't he have the same last name as a uh, um, one of the Hydra dudes or something? I think I saw what you're. I think I read what you're talking about. Uh, I just no, there, I've seen a couple things where everyone's like, he, he's obviously the bad guy, right? And I'm like, I hope he isn't. I hope they set it up so it looks like he would be. But I mean, that goes all the way back to Iron Man one when uh, you know, Jeff Bridges seemed to be like the guy in charge and was the mm. good guy and turned out to be the bad guy. I'm like, I hope they don't do that, just because they. I mean, they've done it several times in the MCU, and it seems it seems obvious that that's what they're setting it up for. Do you know? What I, I'm sorry. What I what I thought was really cool when you're talking about setting things up and et cetera when they um, have their. Uh, uh, brainstorming board. They got their whiteboard and they're writing things down, like things yeah. we don't know, things we know. Yeah. And it was really cool. They're they're going through the cast of her shows and say, "Ah, uh, this is what Parker played by so and so." And I'm like, "Oh my god, I want to pause that and look at the board. I want to read it." And and somebody did. Oh and yeah, people did. <laughs> what they did show. Well, I can rely on those people, so I don't yeah. have to do it myself. Exactly. I just read their effort. You know, so you know they're talking about uh, the the one character they haven't identified anybody with is, uh, of course, uh, the Agnes character. Agnes, yeah, yeah. So that so and a lot of theories about you know the, her name combined is the her old mentor or whatever. Agatha Harkness. Yeah. So we'll see how that plays out. That's pretty cool. Of course, the Mephisto theories are still out there, and of course, the other one is is that the the bad the bad guy is Wanda herself, really. I think it's so. Wanda. We'll we'll see how it works out. I, I like I really liked it. You know, unreliable narrator. You know, good payoff episode for you know those people who can get through that slow burn. You know, which uh, a lot of people can't do nowadays because they're so attention span deficited. I love that episode, but I was really upset I didn't get a 1980s sitcom yet. That's what I was looking forward to. This Come on, week. next week. I know. It's be next week. But, but yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I turned it on. Like, this is going to be awesome. 1980s? Nope. Damn it. Uh, so well, that, 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 better. that was so they could, like, salvage all the – I think they were smart enough to realize we went three episodes in a row. People are going to start complaining. Mm-hmm. So we'll give them a bone. So they were throwing them a bone. And also, we need to know what's going to happen. Like, 
whatever's happening, I think we needed to know the stuff we learned in this episode for future episodes. So did you catch the quick thing about um, who started S.W.O.R.D., the new organization? Did you see who started that? Yeah, yeah Rambo. Captain Marvel's uh, Friend. buddy. Yep, the yeah. pilot. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then, obviously, for people that didn't know, Monica... The sword agent is obviously the daughter that Captain Marvel was talking to uh, in the, her movie. The reason why uh, I didn't even catch that the first time, I fi- I, th- I heard rumors that Monica uh, they were going to, that was the daughter. But then with you the mean, I sword, thought it was her buddy buddy, not her daughter. But yeah, yeah, you're right. And they did play Captain Marvel this weekend, which you and I probably yep. watched the same one because I as soon as it came on, I started watching it, and I'm like, yeah, my daughter wanted to see it for the first time. And um, so I watched it with her, and then we saw it on TV again. <laughs> I was like, damn it. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed that one. Brian, have you seen that yet? You said that was one what? you have to see, still see, right, Captain Marvel? Yeah. Okay. I have not yet. There's. Uh, I was looking at the list earlier, and I think there's four or f- – I think there's five left out of the 23 that I haven't seen. And you – All right. Because off air, you were asking – do I need to see any of them before I see WandaVision? And I, I told you, I think you need to see Ultra, uh, Age of Ultron, um, the two Avengers Infinity War ones, and Captain Marvel will probably be a good one. So Yeah, I think so. Those are Civil War with Captain, help. I've yeah. seen the Civil War. Okay. And Captain Civil Marvel, War. too. I haven't seen Captain Marvel. I haven't seen uh, Infinity Wars or Age of Ultron. Okay. Age of and, Ultron is not great. Yeah. But it does but it, help. It introduces both uh, Vision and Wanda mm-hmm. and Pietro. So Quicksilver, yeah. Who is in the who's listed as a uh, as a cast member, Evan Peters? He's listed for uh, Wanda Vision. Uh, Evan Evan Peters played Quicksilver in the Fox uh, oh, that's right. X-Men that's right. movies. Yes. But he's listed in Wanda Vision. That's right because the other guy has no interest in coming back to MCU. Uh, <laughs> Did he say that? Uh, they said that they can't get a. He doesn't. He isn't really interested. So oh, wow. I think he's yeah, holding out for he Godzilla. Need all that money. <laughs> <laughs> he's, for, he's holding out. It is funny though. So Evan Peters, if you Google Wandavision, you know how it has the cast. Um, yeah. Evan Peters and Paul Bettany are the only two people that don't have character names underneath their names, the actors' names. Oh. So, so they're saying Paul Bettany isn't playing Vision, huh? Of course, Randall Park doesn't either. So wait a minute. <laughs> maybe, oh, maybe it's just Jimmy Google. Woo. <laughs> Jimmy put Chu. on, put on the uh, IMDb page. They have character. Oh, Sorry, that- Evan Peters isn't listed on the IMDb page yet. So yeah, his character hasn't shown up yet. So do you think yeah. that I know of anyway? Jim, do you think they're going to keep Evan Peters as the new Quicksilver? I have no idea. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if they did. I thought he was awesome as Quicksilver. Oh, he was good in it, yeah. I, I don't think that fits the Marvel Universe. You don't think? I don't think his Quicksilver fit what was going on in the MCU. Okay. So, I mean, it it, it was a fun uh, adaptation of it, and, mm-hmm. you know, his scene was the best scene in uh, what movie that was both that? Of them. Uh, <laughs> the both scenes that he did in two different ones. Well, I thought the second yeah. one was just uh, kind of derivative of the first. Yes, but that second one was a repetitive. But it, have you seen the rest of that film? It was still bad. <laughs> that well, was the best good, part. Uh, good point. Apocalypse. <laughs> X-Men Apocalypse. Oh. That we're talking about. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> Um, Jim, do you have anything to add on WandaVision? You really liked it. Oh, it was fantastic. So I'm just looking forward to next week. So I'm, I'm so I'm pissed off. Go that it, it, it I'm not going like to make any plans or anything, what they're going to do. I'm just going to wait and see what they do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think Jeff's right. I mean, I think the slow burn of every week coming out is awesome. I think it's great. Yeah, it was, it was good. I, and I'm sorry I interrupted, but I, I was pissed that it was like, I was watching it. I was having such a good time. And I'm like, dude, was that like 20 minutes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so pissed. Uh, rumor I wish it, there was more time. Rumor is that they may drop two episodes this week because there's been spoilers leaked. I haven't seen them on episode six. 
So to get out in front of them, they may just drop two of them. I'm like, fuck you, fanatics. Let it go. Come on. Nah. Just enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, go ahead. I had some extra time this weekend since I wasn't playing any D and D. So I did. <laughs> so I did get to see a couple of things. I I always wanted to watch the uh, the Office, the English version, you know. And uh, I always see bits and bits and parts of it. And mm-hmm. I finally watched it and I binged it for season one and season two. So you saw the whole thing. Yeah. Did I you like it? Thing. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I actually enjoyed it an awful lot. A hell of a lot dirtier than the American version. I I could never get into the English version of it. I tried, and maybe I need to go back, but it's been a long I, time. I do admit there were a couple times that I had to rewind real quick and put on the closed caption. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because of the <laughs> accent. I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What was that? Yeah, if I, I tried, like Jason said, I tried to watch it. And I, if I did go back, I would definitely need the closed caption. Because, mm-hmm. well, one, when they use, like, different British terminology or slang, and I don't know what it means, it's hard enough when, you know, when you have a hard time understanding what they're saying, and then they're using terminology you don't know. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> and, can, I can see that having a hard time. That's why they're going to mumble. They mumble in that show. Yeah, they they do. But it, it's pretty funny. But I, I did find that a number of the episodes, characters were wearing the same clothes. So I'm like, how, I'm, I was wondering, how many episodes did they shoot in one day on, for that show sometimes, you know? Maybe two or three at or a time because there, there's no costume changes. It would also make sense that they're wearing the same clothes because that's what an office drone would do. They've got a, you know, a set number of outfits to wear. That's true. The, like the whites, true. you know, yeah. standard, like mustard, mustard yellow. Shirt. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. I didn't think of it that way. The, the other fun I had was uh, seeing who was in Shaun of the Dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was pretty good. And then I had some retro movies I, that I saw. Uh, Risky Business. Showtime oh. had Risky Business and Porky's back to back, and I'm like, oh, Risky Business was a good uh, take back film for nostalgic purposes. Of course, you know Re- Re- Rebecca Make Me Horny is, is still pretty hot in there, and, Tom- and young Tom Cruise. Oh my God, he looks so young now. Of course, and. Uh, you, so I went into the notes, and I guess you know Bronson Pinochet, uh, basically in the past several years, has just started ripping Tom Cruise about Tom Cruise being uh, homophobic on the set of that film. Really, just ripping on like how he hates gay people, hmm. and it's weird because it's not like backed up by anybody else, and and I'm surprised <laughs> that uh, you know the Dianetics people haven't offed him yet. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, I mean allegedly. Uh, but it, time out. It, I'm more but, interested, not by that, but that you have yeah. Showtime. Do you pay for Showtime? Yeah, I got it all, man. Why do you pay for Showtime? Uh, where else are you <laughs> going to watch Dexter? Oh, okay. Uh, there's the, they got some good Netflix. <laughs> not the new ones. Yeah, not the Well, yeah, ones. but you could wait till, like, fall of 2021 <laughs> for that. He's prepping. Prepping yeah. for it. Well, then Fair you're going to have to go back and re-listen to this episode and then watch... Never mind. No, but the Porky's Porky's. I remember not really liking that film back in the day. The I original, mean, the, right? Yeah, the, oh, and back one. in the day, that the big thing was "Ooh, show or see," you know, and all that other mm-hmm. goofy shit. But man, that movie doesn't hold up <laughs> no. over the course of time. Oh my <laughs> it does god, not age well. No, I mean, you want to talk about? Well, I you know I can go in all about the whole sexual assault and. Porky's two holds <sighs> up, but not Porky's one. <laughs> yeah, Porky's two. <laughs> Porky's two. You know, just Next. the just the whole just the whole really bad. I'm, and I said I'm sitting there and watching it. Of course, you know, forty years later, and I'm watching this. Like, who in the hell thought this was a good idea to make a movie like this? Early eighties Hollywood, <laughs> obviously. There's a lot of uh, Porky's was one of the better ones of that of the teen sex comedy from the oh 80s. my god which one's better meatballs or t- or uh, Porky's meatballs by far meatballs, meatballs was good yeah. Jim you're saying meatballs 
Oh, definitely. Okay. I don't know if I yeah. resolved I mean, even if it did have a young Kim Cattrall in it, I mean, still. No. Come on, man. No. <laughs> she won't be in Sex and the City revival. No. <laughs> no. Apparently, <laughs> her and uh, what's her name don't get along. <laughs> Um, yeah. Saturday Sarah Night Live. Jessica Parker. Yeah. Saturday Night Live this week, they made a joke with Kim Cattrall, and she's like, uh, "I'm not in it, so it's just the city. Where's the sex? <laughs> it's just going to be the city." Uh, the uh, the monologue was great with Krasinski too, where everyone's like, "Hey Jim, <laughs> kiss Pam," and he's like, like three or four different audience members like tell him in the like in his monologue, and he's like explaining like. You know, those are just fictional characters on TV shows. And then Pete Davidson comes out and he's like, hey, man, you just got to realize, like, everyone's been locked up for a year and we just been binging The Office. <laughs> and then Kenan, then Kenan Thompson stands up and he's like, hey, is that Pam? Kiss Pam. <laughs> and then he does his uh, he does his, you know, characteristic little smirk to the camera. And then he just kisses Pete Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it wasn't a bad episode of Saturday Night Live. It wasn't bad. Uh, there, there's been bad. Talking Jim, if we're talking Jim Halpert, we got to bring up the best Jim Halpert. Asian Randall Jim Park. Halpert, Randall Park. <laughs> also known as Jimmy Woo. <laughs> uh, that was a good episode with uh, Dwight. <laughs> um, I think he was Jimmy. Uh, Blake, did you have anything else retro? No, that was that was it. Okay. Uh, I'm we're through two seasons of Yellowstone, so Brian, I blame you. Uh, yeah, I'm addicted. It's so good. We're uh one episode into season three, I think, and so oh yeah. Um, okay, real quick because I harped, uh, I hinted at this last week. Brian, you're the only one that watches Yellowstone, so I'll do this real quick. Okay, yeah. it is Sons of Anarchy on a cattle ranch. Here's the reason. Kevin Costner's okay. character, John Dodd, uh, he is Clay. Um, uh, shoot, uh, Casey, the kid, the guy that comes back, the Wrangler, uh, John's son, he is Jax. Uh, Beth is uh, Jax's uh, mom, uh, Gemma. <laughs> That's her. Um, Casey's wife in it is Jack's wife in it. Um, and Tara. yep, Tara, Ugh, horrible character. Um, and then Jamie, the horrible attorney, uh, he, he is, um, sorry, uh, he's the guy that, um, uh, hung himself in the last season. Um, uh, the one, the younger guy who was, a uh, juice. Yeah. Juice. And Rip is, um, is Opie. So, and here's the reason. Casey comes back to the ranch. He's trying to fix up the, the Yellowstone to be a nicer Yellowstone. Jax comes back to the An- Sons of Anarchy, tries to make changes to it. Clay won't let him. Neither will John. You know, at the end of the day, they're still, you know, killing Wranglers at leave. And so. Do you think I- they did that on purpose? Just took the scripts of uh, <laughs> Sons, of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy and said, let's adjust the, the, the script and the scene to here. I, I, and then here's the other thing I told my wife, everybody is, uh, what is that? Is that the Duttons? Duttons? Duttons. Yeah. Yeah. They're a horrible family. I mean, they're great, but they're a horrible family. Like they're not the nicest. So how do you make, uh, yeah, but also you have to realize that that is a very typical mentality that that's the way people are. I, I, when it comes to their their land and when you have people trying to take their land mm-hmm. from them or or take, if you work for the FBI <laughs> <laughs> well or i mean you know they don't like change they don't I like tra- the transplants coming in and turning their home mm-hmm. into what they want it to be instead of leaving it and enjoying it for what it is and then you have the Native Americans are the Mayans in Sons. You have the sheriff that actually looks like the old sheriff <laughs> from it. And here's the th- deal that sealed it. I looked at my wife. Season two, you have the brothers come in that are just assholes. And I looked at my wife after they were introduced. I said, 
son of a bitch. This is Sons of Anarchy. And she's like, what do you mean? So I explained the whole thing, and I looked at her. I was like, how do you make a horrible uh, me- a family that you shouldn't care about sympathetic? Well, you go after the fe- you go after the Gemma. You have a group, a bigger group in Sons of Anarchy. They brought white supremacists in. Of course, you're going to root for the outlaw gang against white supremacists. In this, you're going to root for the people that be- destroyed Beth. And I'm like, son of a bitch, this is a blueprint. And I looked at my wife and I said, if those fuckers go to Ireland in season three, I'm out. I'm out. I can't handle that fucking season. <laughs> I can confirm <laughs> there is no Ireland story plot in that season thing? three. That fucking They won't go to Ireland. They'll go somewhere else, though. Idaho. They're, not, they're going to. <laughs> I mean, Jimmy Smith show up. No, no. Yeah, Jimmy <laughs> Smith has not shown up yet. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it, back me up, Brian. Does that not have a good analysis of it? It, I mean, it tracks. Okay. It's, it's there's it's a bit of a stretch, but I I see it. I'm I not saying it. it's word for word. Don't get me wrong. No, no, but, I know, I know. But I'm looking I, at I see them it, like though. son of a bitch. How do you make them sympathetic? You bring these fucking assholes in that don't give a shit. Damn it. <laughs> so. I've enjoyed yeah, you know, in, in 2021, what what better uh, group that everybody can hate as bad guys and white supremacists? <laughs> and there wasn't white supremacists in. Uh, oh, yeah, there was shit. There was in season two <laughs> with the son. Damn it. That's who the brothers hired. Damn it. Oh, I'm sorry. They hired a militia. They hired a militia at the end that they oh, had to go. Militias are a close second. Yes. <laughs> so. I've, I've enjoyed it. I just, the whole time I saw it, I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> I was like, damn it. So, very well, I, uh, very well done. Though. I, Rip is still probably one of my favorite TV characters. Um, my wife is in love with him. Uh, <laughs> she said, she, she, she let slip to uh, me. She's like, if they, if, uh, she said the one day that he is hot as anything. I'm like, what? <laughs> and she's like, oh my god, he is. Look at him. And so when he was going off leading the charge at the end of the second season, I won't spoil it. She literally was like freaking out. She's like, if they kill him, I can't. I will not watch the second season, Jason. If they kill him, I can't. I can't watch it. And I was like, well, he's going in first. And she's like, give him a fucking bulletproof vest. <laughs> I was like, well. <laughs> He's a cowboy, but yeah, she, yeah, he's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah. So, sorry. Right. He was also he was also a white supremacist in uh, higher learning. <laughs> he was <laughs> Cole Hauser. Yeah, definitely he was. <laughs> Jim, uh, did you start Yellowstone? I watched the first episode because it's free on Peacock, but I can't watch the rest of the first season. So I'm just going to start on the second season probably this week. <laughs> So the reason why we were able to get all the seasons is uh, um, Paramount Network did a marathon over New Year's Day weekend, New Year's Eve weekend, and uh, I taped them all on DVR. So I just taped the series, and so I was able to do every episode. So um, you're saying we can come over to your place to watch it? Sure. Sure. I'll, uh, all right. I'll uh, move the TV so you can look through the window. Um, no, you can just leave the house. We'll come over when you leave. I'll, I'll, bring, tra- I'll bring the lights off. I mean, you, you you and your family do all these excursions all over the place. While you're I'll doing one of your excursions, we'll go and watch. Uh, you're just trying uh, to fucking bait me, Jeff, and you're not going to get it this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I also, I for, almost forgot. I did watch episode one of uh, The Lady in the Dale. What? It's uh, You can probably get it on HBO Max. Yeah, The Car yeah. of the Day. Let me just say, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit different than what you anticipated. And I, I like how they set up the huge con and then the surprise. And it's almost like another con in within itself. And I don't want to give it away, but you're almost like, oh, my goodness. That's what is interesting? Yeah, that's, that's the three car, the three wheeled car. And I remember that three wheeled car from my childhood. Something about it. Yeah. What is this? Lady in the Dale. It's Lady HBO in the Dale. Dale. Hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll you can watch it. it on HBO Max. So. Okay. If you don't have HBO. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, breaking news: We just got something uh, from Fish because he's in Florida. 
even though ta- uh, the Tam- uh, even though Tampa is, uh, has the Super Bowl, the NFL won't allow them to fire the cannons from the pirate ship since it's supposed to be a neutral game. They won't. <laughs> it's like I thought you were going to say. Something I could understand it. that. Yeah, it, it's violence. definitely a neutral site. Then. <laughs> Yeah, they can't shoot the cannons. Why can't you do it for both? Well, if they do it for both, then I can understand. But I think they were planning on only doing it for when the Patriot, their Patriots, (laughs) the uh, Buccaneers did something. Stupid Tom Brady. I mean, at this point, put a fucking real cannonball in there. There's not enough people in the crowd. Let them shoot it out. Come on, there'll be like eighteen thousand. Yeah. Uh, the you, one thing I'm looking forward to with this Super Bowl is Tom Brady tying the record. For what? Most Super Bowl losses by a starting quarterback. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. I love I love all the sports shows talks. Greatest of all time, you know, Tom Brady or uh, Mahomes. I'm like, Give me a break, man. <laughs> just, just give me a break. I mean, it's obviously a very slow media week since they don't yeah. have the traditional, you know, Super Bowl craziness that goes on. But you, you, you can't compare a guy that's played four years and starts saying, "Oh, he's the greatest of all time." You know, you 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 could probably you know say that say that about almost tons of players that yeah. fizzled out. You, know, you got to give I them mean, more time. You, you can maybe talk about make greatest like single game performance or something. That's yeah. about it. Yeah, you, you can't compare the careers of a yeah. twenty-year-old veteran to a four-year player. Yeah. Um, so and and he did make he has made two Super Bowls in his first four years. But my God, look at look at the talent that's stacked around him and and everything else. And I'm not detracting it. That obviously helps an awful lot. But guess what? For the next 15 years, he could be Dan Marino. Yeah. Well, he has more mobility than Dan Marino. That's now. true. <laughs> he could be. And he actually <laughs> won a Super Bowl already. It's true. So. And true. Phil Holmes is in a movie with Jim Carrey. He'll never be Dan Marino. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I'm sure they'll reboot Ace Ventura with it. Don't worry. I'm sure they'll get it. I'm sure. Uh, you know who is in the Super Bowl? Aaron fucking Rodgers. <laughs> I fuck you, piece of shit. Are you uh, doing that just because of your sister? No, I fucking hate Aaron Rodgers. I fucking hate that guy. He's a conceited piece of shit, allegedly. Um, anyways, so, but he's probably about, very about fun. Aaron Rodgers being seen in the back of a pickup truck with a case of Bud Light. <laughs> I yeah, I was, I was about to say he's probably a lot more fun than you realize. He did date Olivia they, Munn. They yeah. Asked him, was that you? He's like, yeah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was like no denying. He's like, hell yeah, that was me. Well, he is hanging out in Wisconsin. That's what you do when you're true. in Wisconsin. Yeah, and he, true. yeah, that's right. And he did date the G4 model. Uh, did he have cheese curds? That would have made it perfect if he had cheese curds. Uh, He's huh? probably on his way to have some. Um, Jeff, uh, I thought of you. We were looking for um, national parks cheese to visit curds. this year for vacation. Well, my wife actually thought of you. And the one cabin we're staying at, there's a restaurant nearby, um, and they have on there as a specialty apple fritters. Ooh. And I know so that you love your apple fritters. So you're going down to Great Smoky Mountains? No, we're not. We are not going to the Smoky Mountains. Because there's apple fritters right outside of that. There is. It's not Smoky Mountains. <laughs> so um, we thought of you. We thought hey, of you. Do you want to go? Jason, yeah. Jason Smoky you Mountains? can join me. At a national park uh, in uh, in uh, May. I'm sorry. What was that part? You can join me in a national park in May. Where the newest national the park. newest national park, the New River Gorge National Park. Oh, is that become a, a national park? Yeah, yes. this is just up the river from the old old River Gorge. <laughs> the New pretty- River is is possibly the oldest river in North America. Yeah. Yes, the Tees Valley. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, Rochester and Vermont being the 51st and 52nd state. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Blake, you got some listener uh, feedback over there? Yeah, I do, actually. Actually, I'll let you guys pick who's it sponsored by this week. Would you like it to be sponsored by LeBron James's courtside etiquette or Queen Victoria's lack of self-awareness? 
Oh, Queen Victoria. Be Queen Victoria. <laughs> Queen. 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 Uh, Ron James. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, can it be sponsored by Marilyn Manson's record label who dropped him? Did they officially drop uh, him? Yeah. Well, like he put out anything uh, of note in the past 15 years anyway. I want to fuck you. That's great. <laughs> uh, that was not Marilyn Manson. No, I just realized that I stopped singing after. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, don't, don't you bring Trent Reznor in this. Don't you bring Trent in this. <laughs> I started saying, I was like, ah, that's not right. Uh, <laughs> do I go committed to it? <laughs> like the last train to Clarksville? Or do I just <laughs> stop? <laughs> yeah. But the Marilyn Manson thing isn't funny. The other two, no. the other two choices are so. No. Uh, it's a sh- it's surprising uh, that he's been um, accused of assault, um, you know, sexual assault and all that because he seemed like a level headed guy. He really did, uh, Marilyn <laughs> yeah. Manson. He, he seemed really like such down a to teddy earth. bear. What'd you say, Jim? He's really down to earth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brian Warner a... of what, Akron, Ohio. Yeah. He was in the one normal years. guy. Canton Glen Oak. Canton, okay. Yeah, he went to Canton Glen Oak High School. So that's who sponsors us, all three. Great. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. We always start, you know, we didn't do let's last week. Let's just skip week. this first one. I think we can just say. No! Hey, no, no, no. There will be no skipping him this week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ape well, hands. the first one is from that, you know, that one guy. Ape hands. Seven. Probably known as. One, Doc, no, the big D. What, Dad? There you go, <laughs> big D. He says, "Uh, you know, when intern Hackney is on the show, my questions get read." Case in point, hashtag Death to the Fax Machine. I forgot. Didn't he, didn't he know that it was intern Gary last week? The fax machine actually did listen to our feedback last week. Oh, okay. So right. it got fired midway through the episode. <laughs> yeah, by fired we took the fax machine into the middle of a field and t- took a baseball bat to it. We office spaced it. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Doug. So there, there you go, Doug. All right. Uh, next one's from Paula. Just Paula. Hmm. Says, uh, "What's the best thing you have done during quarantine?" Uh, um, uh, I did a lot more oh. bike trail riding. Oh. I did a lot less going outside. <laughs> That's your best thing. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> son. Let's <laughs> say learn learned how to uh, play uh, like D and D and board games over the internet. True, I can say D and D too. Uh, I read more. I should have did <laughs> golf. <laughs> you know, I always wanted to read Time of the Twins. You know, the Dragonlance. You know, saga. I, I, I still can't finish the Time of the Twins. I'll just stick with the original trilogy. I think Brian finished so that like in a have, week. You yeah, have no interest in the new one they're writing then. Mm. I don't know. No. We'll we'll see. It all depends on what the subject matter is. So, since they dropped their lawsuit against uh, Wizards well, of the Coast. Well, see the thing. Yeah, I know that that opened it all up. You know, what, the the whole Hasbro Wizards of the Coast uh, licensing for novels is a whole other subject that I can get into, but we're already running behind the schedule. But I, I can talk about it. You know, of how it's well. Anyways, never mind. So. <laughs> So do we answer Paula's question? Didn't, yeah, exactly. You know, it's kind of hard. It's it's kind of hard to uh, root and believe in a in a character, you know, in a book in the time of the twins, Raceland, and then he's supposed then his love interest, but they never really said, you know, how she ends up loving him because he's such a despicable character in these this trilogy. And that's like, all right, whatever. But anyway, <laughs> it's, it's kind of it's kind of like I watched what was it the King of Queens? No, not King of Queens. The uh, King of New York. What, what's the what's the uh, movie with uh, um, uh, uh-huh. SNL kid? What's his name? King of Staten Island. It's Pat. King of Staten Island. Yeah, I watched it for ten minutes and I turned it off. I was like, you know, how can I root for him as the main character? He's a despicable person. But no, anyway. no, you were right when you said King of Queens. Yeah, yeah, same thing. <laughs> oh, Amanda. 
the Eddie Money episode was on today. I forgot how funny that one was. Uh, Two tickets to paradise. Uh, Yo. Thank All you. right. But yeah, Paula. I started singing the heart of rock and roll. <laughs> That's Huey Lewis. Not Eddie Money. Wow. God. You know, I did something really dumb today. And my wife Jason, is you like, got to get back in time. I, I did. Uh. <laughs> and my wife's like, why would you do that? And I was like, there's a very simple answer for that. I'm an idiot. <laughs> and she stopped her track. She's like, yeah, it's got a point. <laughs> so I'm an idiot. <laughs> there I'm, you go. I'm an idiot. Uh, next, next one from Kevin at uh, Cincy Explorer. Martian Manhunter has been confirmed in the Snyder Justice League film. Does this change your mind about watching it? Nope. <laughs> Easiest no. answer ever. Is he getting like edited in or I don't understand. No, apparently there is a character who's been in the DCU who they are confirming is now Martian Manhunter who's been in disguise this whole time. One of the generals. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I planned on watching it anyways. Besides this new revelation, so we uh, no <laughs> four hours, four oh, God. hours. Looking forward to it. <sighs> Supposedly, I agreed to go on a podcast for my British brethren and uh, talk about this film. You know, when when you do, ask them to turn the uh, subtitles on, you know, closed captioning on for you, Jason. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think Justice League Snyder piece of shit cut is in, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, No, I'm talking about Kevin and your nerd. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) We we, we want Kevin subtitles as well. Kevin, could you help me? We're going to need the subtitles to try to understand your Michael Caine impression. (laughs) (laughs) So... I got a question, Jack. Mm. Were they asked on because they wanted to get someone's opinion who hated the movie? (laughs) I think part of it is that Kevin really thinks I'm going to like this film. Like, this is the cut that turns me around on DC films for Schneider. This is the one. I mean, granted, (sighs) it probably will be better than what they put out. But, I mean, it's also, yeah, he's getting twice the budget to make twice as long of a film. It's like, this isn't the film we would have gotten if Snyder hadn't stepped away. I barely made it through two hours and 40 minutes of the original. I don't know how I'm going to another hour and 20 minutes, man. Hopefully this will be better than what they (laughs) showed. Four hours are going to fly by like it's three hours and 45 minutes. I'm excited. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! So you saved yourself 15 minutes of life. Oh, God. This is going to be awful. Uh, he wanted to do a live version. I said, fuck that. <laughs> do you want me complaining and groaning the whole time? Oh, it's going to happen no matter what. But <laughs> Yeah, but if you're doing, a, doing it live, then That's you get right. four hours of Jason going, oh, Lord. Oh, fuck this. From this moment on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else you got, Blake? Uh, next, we got uh, corrections. That usually means you're either going to hear from uh, Big Dev or Big D. Mm-hmm. And we got uh, Big D again. Segment recast has never been in the Hobie universe. I believe you are referring to Riddle Me This. That was last week's uh, segment that we did. Um, so Was it last I... week or the week before? I don't know. Uh, I think so... it was last week. Yeah, I think Jay- so. Jason mentioned something about people send us things and we'll recast and yeah. blah, blah. and I wasn't I just didn't think it was worth uh, correcting you at the time. Oh, but, okay. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> the now whole, you, you know, say you, don't it is. Talk okay. over, you try not to talk over people so cuz you're talking and I'm trying to and by the time there was a time to start talking, it was already way past mm-hmm. the discussion. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I noticed it right away. Oh, I mean, sure you did. I'm like, it's it riddle me this. I knew mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know all the Jeopardy qu- and, uh, questions, too, as soon as, you know, they're told to you. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, as soon as they're told to me, yeah. Yeah, see. I, I, I only know about 88% of the Jeopardy questions. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, what else you got, Blake? 
And we're going to wrap it up with uh, Professor Number One and Doctor Number One. He's like, face off. Cyclones, old Cylons. school. <laughs> I mean, Cylons, sorry, old school versus Stormtroopers. Jim, who you got in this? I'm assuming he's meaning Star Wars Stormtroopers, not yes. uh, Nazis. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I imagine the, I, I, the Cylons probably are better shots than the Stormtroopers are. Because yeah. they're robots. If yeah, well, would shoot Cylons, they would miss. I would rather compare the stormtroopers to uh, Cobra agents. Oh, that's Ooh, a good one. That would be a good fight. <laughs> the Cylons would kill them all. So yeah. we got Cylons. So who would you pick, Cobra Elite or stormtroopers? Um, neither. <laughs> What well, well, storm, stormtroopers die? Uh, storm, I'd probably take the Cobra guys because they don't die. They, don't, they always parachute out. They of always planes, parachute. So. That's right. They always parachute out. All Until, the stormtroopers have the magnetic armor where blasters automatically hit them. And and in, uh, uh, in larger or whatever the, the, the blast that hits them. A, a normal a blast would hurt, but they make it lethal by their armor. Um, who would win between stormtroopers and red shirts in Star Trek? Ooh, because the red shirts can't die if they're not getting hit. <laughs> I mean, they may fall somewhere, or hit but they always get hit. That's not with stormtroopers. Not with well, the red shirts would be diving at the the, the blasters and whatnot to get like it's my mission to die. Uh, Don't take that from me. They Lieutenant Dan the whole thing, <laughs> or you create a wrinkle in the universe. Oh, uh, it's, uh, time space continuum. Yeah, this is how we got murder hornets. <laughs> this is how it <laughs> right. <ended. laughs> um. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, Jeff, give me some uh, news of the geek here. It's time for another installment of the news of the geek. Per, 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 peta. <laughs> Boo. Oh, People boo. eating tasty animals. Um, I don't think that's what it stands for, does it? People eating tasty animals? I don't know. Anyways, I think so. <clears throat> these assholes, allegedly. Uh, a press release from PETA is asking people not to practice species speciesism. Uh, yes, yeah, speciesism. Per the release, words cannot words can create a more inclusive wor- word. Sorry, let me start over. <laughs> per the release, unless unless Jason's reading your words, words can create a more inclusive world or perpetuate <laughs> perpetuate. <laughs> Calling someone an animal as an insult reinforces the myth that humans are superior to other animals and justified in violating them. Well, I don't know about that violating here. Calm down there, PETA. Specious supremacy. Stand up for justice by rejecting supremacist language. Instead of chicken, use coward, which doesn't make sense because there's cow in the word. I mean, (laughs) come on. Help me out. How would you call someone chicken shit? Coward shit. Coward shit. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> instead of a, work instead of a rat well, call them a snitch well i'm gonna go back to what brian just said i mean calling someone chicken shit you're not insulting the chicken you are comparing the person to the chicken excrement okay okay so okay. is that <laughs> yeah I, I think you i think that one's good even PETA, i don't that's think a loophole that that's one. a loophole i think that's a loophole okay just add shit to the end so Go ahead, finish. Instead, of, instead of saying shit snake, say jerk or snake shit. Yes. Um, instead of pig, <laughs> say repulsive or pig shit. Mm. Instead of say, uh, staying sloth, who calls somebody sloth? Uh, call them lazy or sloth shit. So there you go. Now that last one doesn't make <laughs> sense to me because I'm pretty sure the word sloth mm-hmm. meant that before they named the animal. Maybe yeah, you're calling the animal after the word. Maybe they're calling them one of the seven deadly sins and yeah. not the animal. They're saying you should probably rename the seven deadly sins mm-hmm. and name the, that, the deadly sin lazy, not sloth. The good news, Or maybe we should rename the animal lazy. 
Oh. Ah. But then we couldn't use lazy. Oh, look at those cute lazies. <laughs> Here's the thing. Just uh, moving around all slow. It's very sloth-like, don't you think? That lazy. <laughs> I can't believe that guy's such a Takashi 6 9 No. Stop it. What a you know, sn- what a snitch that, shit. Yeah. I like the that issue word. I, I mean rat shit. Yeah. I mean, I, oh, I don't even know what I mean. The issue I have with this is three years ago, Peter released the same thing, and we talked about it on this podcast. Did we? Did. Nothing oh, ever yeah, changed. We did. <laughs> no, I think it was pretty much the exact same press release. They released oh, it just recently. Yeah. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, no. Peter re-released it because they, th- they can't think of anything better to do. That's right. Peter should stick to do what they do if best, and that's giving them. the world... Supermodels naked soft porn. Um, here's my thing, <laughs> Jim. Do you think PETA released it again because the world is pretty much perfect? Like we haven't had any issues lately. Like everybody's fine. We're having a good time. You know, it's like the Roaring 1920s. I, do you think that's part of the reason? No, I think they released it because no one's paying attention to them again. They have to look ridiculous. Oh, that could be it too. Uh, Jeff, take your uh, headphones out for a second. Uh, let's see here. Um, or somebody. We got static somewhere. There we go. Jimmy? Nope. Anyways, uh, let's see here. Heidi Klum's daughter, Lenny, is giving everyone an up-close and personal look at her skin woes. Oh, boy. The 16-year-old posted an image of one of her cheeks which appears to have some redness and acne marks. Quote, now, skin I, on a bad I was day. Con- I was confused by this at first, and I, was, I didn't know what story you're talking about, because the only thing I saw in my little phone thingy when I opened up the PDF was image of one of her cheeks, which appears to have some redness. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, Jesus Christ, Jason, what are you... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Lenny's unfiltered photo of acne on her cheek, titled, This Too Shall Pass has been liked over 100,000 times with many people applauding her for showing an authentic version of herself. So that you know, quote, so that you show some reality. One person commented on Lenny's post. Another wrote, welcome to the world. This is normal skin. In December, December, a more glammed version of Lenny was photographed alongside her mother for Vogue Germany. This is how we Vogue. Following in her mother's footsteps, she shared with the publication that it was only a matter of time before she would try to become a model. The f- quote, the first offer came when I was 12 or 13 from a brand I like to wear, Brandy Melville. She just advertised it. She yes. got, probably got paid for that. At that time, I begged my mother, but no chance. No chance in hell. No chance in hell. Now I understand that it would have been too early for me to have a fake career. Oh, I'm sorry, I had the last part. So um, I, I don't understand why a, a supermodel's daughter showing acne is a big news story. Okay, yeah. Well, isn't that life? That's life. I, I yeah. saw the picture. I'm like, that is typical it, teenage acne. It's because people live on Instagram now. They live their life through other people's lives on Instagram. Okay. This is a girl who was raised by Seal. Yeah, you can and she's complaining yeah. about her acne. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <sighs> so Brian, ninety is to uh, everybody over ninety shall die. Right? You're okay with that? Can we go back to that topic? <laughs> Jesus, you know oh, I thought we started that's some off bad. Shit right there. <laughs> well, speaking of young people and stupidity, you see the new the stupid ass TikTok controversy going now. It's like show your natural body with the red filter. In a, <laughs> but you all can these take the idiots don't off. understand. You can take the red filter off, or you or you can modify the image to reduce the red filter. Mm-hmm. And now, now they're upset because people are posting pictures of themselves in a red filter that's supposedly hiding their, you know, nakedness, jumbliness, or whatever. <laughs> and now they're upset that somebody's come out and said, "Oh yeah, this is how you get around it." I'm like, you're not supposed to be posting that stuff. 
in the first place because this, you know somebody's going to get it. I is mean, this on TikTok? And do stuff with it. Yeah. Of course it is. Uh, you know. Fucking TikTok. Then Tide Pods. I mean, you know, can you just bring, that, bring back the Tide Pods? I mean, come on. Gronk needs to talk about this, too. He helped with the Tide Pods. Um, let's see here. Other things. Uh, Walt Disney. And, co- and the thing about the whole tic- TikTok mm-hmm. stuff, isn't it amazing what lemmings people are? Yes. There is a incredibly um, do not refer to dumb oh my gosh I as lemmings. <laughs> oh I mean we gosh. just discussed this. Oh god. Lemming <laughs> shit. <laughs> lemming shit. <laughs> yeah. How amazing that's what I meant. lemming shit people are. <laughs> um HBO actually has a new documentary out called Fake Famous. Uh, about social media influ- influencers and how they buy their way to glory. So there you oh, go. Yeah. Uh, I just think everybody likes to be fake famous. But the thing you, is, you, you post selfies. You think about yourself. You're essentially making yourself a, a mini, you know, a, you know, a mini celebrity in your own world. Um. Uh, now we're getting too deep. Can we just get back to sure. insulting teenage acne? Let, 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 let me get you something better here. Walt All Disney right. Company has extended its relationship with Black Panther director and co-writer Ryan Coogler. Uh, Disney has made a five-year overall exclusive television deal with his Proximity Media, uh, which he runs. Uh, they are working on, Coogler's working on Black Panther sequel right now. Uh, but they're going to make a Disney Plus series based on the Kingdom of Wakanda. Uh, so there you go. Um, I'm impressed with it. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Welcome to Wakanda. Are they going to address Wakanda's immigration policies? Stop it. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Um, yeah, so they haven't said exactly who's going to be the lead, what, what it's going to be about, but um, my guess is it's a drama, so I have no idea, actually. Uh, but I'm fine with that. I like Wakanda. I think that could be a cool, cool little feature they have. So uh, that happened. Uh, Dolly Parton. Uh, talk today that she turned down, uh, what was it, the... Um, Presidential uh, Medal of Freedom. Medal yeah, of Freedom, to, thank you. Yeah. Uh, twice from Donald Trump. It wasn't po- politics because she does not get involved in politics. She did not want to travel anywhere because of her husband is um, uh, prone because of medical conditions with COVID and that. So he's, he's Husband? How about herself? No, well, that's true. She's, She's in 75. the high risk age group. No one, no one's going to fight. COVID is not going to mess with Dolly. Even COVID is impressed with Dolly sometimes. Um, so oh, there you no, go. It's been a bitch of a year. Uh, has anybody watched Mr. So instead of giving it to her, they gave it to Lou Holtz. Is he dead? No. Oh, okay. But he has, apparently he's got COVID. Did, uh, mm. Does anybody watch the new Ted Dancing show? Uh, Tan- Ted Dancing Mr. show? Mayor. Yeah. Did anyone see it? I watch it. Do you like it? Yeah, it 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 has some growth. Yes. Before I would call it good, but I it has potential. Uh, is it Holly Hunter? <laughs> yeah, Holly Hunter. Hunter. Yes. Oh yeah, I watched Raising Arizona again this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> Nick Cage. There you go. Yeah, I left him. Ah, yeah. There we go. Now I remembered what I watched. <laughs> uh, Doctor Dan and I watched Walker. Oh, the new, new Walker. Episodes. Yeah. Go ahead and talk Walker. We'll come back to Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. What do you think about Walker? Um, so I, I don't really remember much of Chuck Norris's version. Like mm-hmm. I didn't because it, it was like on when I was a kid. So I never really watched much of it. But mm-hmm. um, for a CW show, <laughs> uh, I was pretty happy with it. it I mean, that's like, on that's on the advertisements for a CW yeah. show. I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's not going to win any awards, mm-hmm. but it was the pilot was was a little choppy, but the second episode, I finally like. We finally were like, okay, like I can see where they're going, or you know, I can see how they're going to go with this, and it was it was good. Like I I'm excited to watch more of it. And not everything has to be. Blockbuster. It could just be enjoyable. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, plus, you know, Dr. Dana is a big uh, Jared Padalecki fan. Ooh. So that doesn't hurt. He is kind of cute. He is cute. His abs. His abs. Mm. Uh, so. 
How long do you think his brother from Supernatural was going to show up? How long until then? Well, he's going to be on season four of The Boys, so I don't think it'll be anytime soon. Ah, oh, that's right, because he plays the new guy, yeah. right? Yep. Oh. So, uh, Jeff, with Mr. Mayor, uh, I think it's Holly Hunter, right? That's yeah, the, it's Holly Hunter. I think her character can be <clears throat> annoying at times. Yeah, uh, they need to find out her right voice. Mm-hmm. I think Ted Danson's down pretty good, but mm-hmm. uh, Holly Hunter's... Do they, do they have his right to pay? They do. They do. It's sure. a very blonde one, or uh, very gray one. Very gray and white. Uh, it looks good on him. Looks good. Uh, Bobby Mo- Moynihan is pretty funny in it. I like him. Yeah. Uh, they, they might go a little too over the top with him, but... I yeah, did. we'll see. The reason can, I, I think, go ahead. Sorry, oh, sorry go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just saying that. <laughs> uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. I, I just, I, I think everybody is close to finding it, but uh, they, they just need to fix it, and uh, it could be good. And this is one they'll probably give a little bit of breathing room to find their feet. Um, well, I was going to say the reason I brought Mr. Mayor up is because. In it, it takes a place a year after the pandemic, and the pandemic is no longer, uh, they don't have to worry about it because Dolly Parton uh, donated enough money to uh, get the vaccine for it. <laughs> I like that. They just kind of <laughs> threw that in. <laughs> it's like, good old Dolly. That's awesome. So, okay. Uh, Jeff, box office news and world reports with Jeff now. Wow, well, don't, don't ever give me that introduction again. I'm still standing. Okay, go ahead. Better than I ever did. Looking like a true survivor. Feeling like a little kid. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, uh, Come Sail Away. As soon as someone starts singing it, I have to get to the end before mm-hmm. I can think of anything else. Or, Is that Boston? What's that, Brian? Come Sail Away with me. Is that Boston? Rush. Uh, <laughs> Rush. Rush. <laughs> Rush. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, is it the same type that when you do, tell me what you want, what you really, really want? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Okay. Uh, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to, I want to. I, I really, really, really want to zig a zig Okay, thanks. Um, if you want to get with me, you got to get with my friends. Good job, Blake. I like that. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, Remember, I raised, raised girls. That's right. <laughs> Uh, uh, Jeff, what's your box uh, office news? Uh, this weekend, January 29th through January 31st of 2021, number one at the box office, The Little Things made $4.8 million in its opening weekend on a $30 million budget. Good for them. It was also on HBO Max. Ah, number two, The Crudes, A New Age, Made another one point eight million, a total of forty four million, on a budget of sixty five million. Okay. Number three, Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four, made another one point three million, a total of thirty nine million, on a two hundred million dollar budget. Not on HBO Max anymore. Oh, it is off now. Yes. That's true. They were only going to be on for a month. Yes, thirty one days. Uh, the Marksman. Coming in fourth place with one point two five million, a total of seven point eight million on a twenty three million dollar budget. Okay. And at number five, Monster Hunter made seven hundred and forty thousand, a total of eleven point one million on a sixty million dollar budget. Uh Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four uh has raked up the most viewing time yet for a feature film on its opening weekend. Uh let's see here. It racked up. Hold on. Look in here. Ah, let me get it. Uh, 2.25 billion minutes viewed. Uh, okay. Soul was 1.67 billion. The Office, 1.2 billion or 1.44 billion. So there you go. Uh, American version or original English? American. Yeah. American. So there America. You go. American. So. Just kind of interesting about that. So, uh, what else, Jeff? Uh, upcoming uh, February fifth, twenty twenty one. We've got Minamata. 
war photographer W. Eugene Smith travels back to Japan where he documents the devastating effect of mercury poisoning in coastal communities. This is uh, Johnny Depp, Bill Nighy, and a bunch of uh, Japanese guys. Uh-huh. I was going to guess it sounded like a documentary until you told me the actors in it. Well, it might have something to do with the documentary from 1971 of the same name. Ah. Uh, also, we have coming out. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably not a sequel to Big Fish, but we have Little Fish coming out. A couple fights to hold their relationship together as memory loss virus spreads and threatens to erase the history of their love and courtship. Ooh, a memory loss virus. That sounds kind of cool. Olivia Cook, uh, Jack O'Connell are the stars of this one. Okay. Jack O'Connell. I'm trying to see if I know him from anywhere. Not right. coming to mind. Okay. What else? Uh, we yeah, have the... Jack O'Connell would be uh, Unbroken. He started in the movie Unbroken. Okay. Uh, the U.S. Uh, distance runner, Louis Zamperini, who was taking the... Uh, uh, Prisoner of War uh, in uh, the Pacific. Hmm. Okay, I think I remember the the uh, ads for that. Good movie. Uh, also coming out, we have The Reckoning. Well, I reckon. Evelyn, a young widow hunted, uh, haunted by the recent suicide of her husband, Joseph, is falsely accused of being a witch by her landlord after she advance, rejects his advances. Hmm. What, like do we a, dar- what do we do with witches? Burn <laughs> witches. <laughs> Sounds like such a plot twist. What do we burn besides witches? Small churches? <laughs> Little small rocks. Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, also coming out, we have the human factor. Overrated. Better than a human the epic stain. behind the scenes story of the United States 30 year effort to secure peace in the Middle East, recounted from the unique perspective of the American mediators on the front lines. 30 years. Spoilers. Doesn't happen. Uh, <laughs> next. <laughs> uh, next, we have Dara of Jasenovic. Jasenovic. Dara of Jasenovic. Uh, the film is set in the Nazi-occupied Croatia Ostasha regime, NDH, in former Yugoslavia during World War II. The film is uh, told to the experience of a little girl named Dara who was sent as a child during the Holocaust in the Balkans to the infamous extermination camp complex Jasenovic, also known as Balkans Auschwitz. Jeez. When it was ruled by the sadistic camp commander Mark, uh, Max Lubrich, until the liberation. The film is the first modern World War II movie that takes place in or shows the NDH era camp. Ah, so it's a feel good movie. Yes. It's a coming I, of age tale. I was going to make a Daria of uh, <laughs> joke, but I think I'll shut up. <laughs> that sounds depressing. Jeez, old Pete. And we have. That's the fall. perfect film for COVID. There you go. For <laughs> yeah. COVID quarantines. Oh my God. Well, we could watch shitty. a Serbian film. Ugh. Oh, God. Takes place in the same uh, geographical vicinity. Uh. How about we never look at, watch Croatian films? <laughs> Can we just put an embargo <laughs> on that? <laughs> well, stop putting them on the outline. <laughs> this is your doing. Don't come to me. I it, think it was Gary. Gary Fucking Gary. In. Go back to your mobile home. <sighs> what what Gary did what Gary did uh, Gary screwed up on on the outline was on the top five list. He only has four spots. Oh, we were only supposed to write four down. Right? Yeah, I saw that. Well, it's because I realized when we were talking about Justice League and when I was looking for my favorite five films for the last five years of what a vacuum the last five years has been. <laughs> it wasn't as big of a vacuum as I thought when I started going through the lists because I like came up with two before I actually had to just look at all the films released every year for the past five years. Like I, 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 I figured that your number one is last Jedi. So why have any other ones up there? Just put four <laughs> other ones on there. Uh, uh, what's falling Jim? 
Bowling. John Peterson lives with his partner, Eric, and their adopted daughter in Southern California when he is visited by his aging father, Willis, from Los Angeles, who is searching for a place to retire. Their two very different worlds collide. Wacky hijinks that is, ensue. Uh, Vigo Mortensen. Nope. nope. Never mind. I don't like Vigo. Aragorn. Lance Hendrickson. Yeah. Mara oh. Linney. Lance oh. Hendrickson. I like Laura Linney. Okay. Uh, this Directed one. and written by Vigo Mortensen. So. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, you know, Vigo Mortensen might be at the Cincinnati Comic Expo September 17th through the 19th at the Duke Energy Convention Center uh, in Cincinnati, oh. Ohio. You can Is check he bringing out. the walking tree with him? He might. Uh, I can't confirm that he's going to be there, <laughs> but it could be. Who knows? Find my copy of The Road. Oh, Dude, there's a what a fifty percent chance he'll be there. Either he'll be there or he won't. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I brought Diamond the may be the sword, there, uh, but it's broken. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so September seventeenth through nineteenth, Cincinnati Comic Expo. Get your tickets. Hopefully, in a couple months, let's get some fucking vaccines going. Let's fucking destroy this COVID uh, variant. Let's get a fucking expos back together. Let's go, people. Come on. Wear your fucking mask. Let's get some vaccines. Hey, if we have to reduce people for attendance, I'll volunteer. <laughs> Thanks, Blake. Quit the take off. <laughs> I've already bought my tickets so from last year. If you have tickets from last year, they're going to be transferred over. Uh, that's how we get a chance to go again. Uh, but yes, uh, Hobie will be there playing trivia. We got like 200 Funko Pops to give away. Uh, as my wife says, please show up and play trivia. Uh, she doesn't <laughs> want them in her house. Uh, <laughs> I think that's what the poster says. <laughs> Come Jason's on. wife, please show up. <laughs> <laughs> For a CW show, it's good. Uh, let's see. So Get this shit out of my house. <laughs> this snake shit out of my house. Um, <laughs> let's see here. So, yeah, September 17th through the 19th. Uh, who knows? You might get a chance to see Vigo. Uh, I can't confirm that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you can ask him about fucking ants. Fucking walking trees. Uh, top five this week. Uh, this is from intern Gary. Uh, he had to go back to Indiana or wherever he's from. But um, he had to... Uh, he got one list. Uh, top five here. Top five favorite films of the last five years. After looking at this, I realize I haven't seen a lot of good. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of films in the last five years. <laughs> that uh, well, I know. one film or one year of that five years is pretty much wiped away. <laughs> uh, Bad Boys for Life. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh darn, that was my number one. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, the Crudes, A New Age. <laughs> One Wonder Woman 1984 That shouldn't be on anyone's top five list uh, Let's see here uh, Jeff what's your number well, five Well silly 1984 is more than Five years away My bad He's got a point uh, My number five I have uh, Kubo and the Two Strings Ah the anime Is that anime It, <coughs> it yeah. is animated I wouldn't say anime Okay Good job. Okay, that uh, that was up for yeah. some awards. It was, and after it was up for awards, I watched it and I thought that should have done better than it did because I really enjoyed that. I think it's on HBO Max right now. So uh, check it out if you have. It. Okay, Brian, number five. Uh, number five. Uh, I hobied this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Furious Seven. Fate of the Furious and Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. Like those have anything to do with each other. <laughs> so I haven't seen a Fast and Furious since the second one. Can I just jump into the new ones? What? No. Really? Seriously. No. What, can you skip Tokyo Drift? Tokyo Drift is the... In the future. Yes. It's the <laughs> second movie in... That came out that was released, but it's actually falls in line after I think Furious, uh, Fate of the Furious. Okay, it's the third film that came out. Third film, 
Fast and Furious, Fast and Furious. Too two. Fast, Too Furious. Yeah, and then it was Tokyo Drift. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> too Fast, Too Furious. I I do often forget about that. And I'm actually being somewhat serious. I'm trying to be an asshole, too. But uh, I dude. wouldn't. It would be I like watching WandaVision before hard. watching The Avengers. Because you they, they have recurring characters that come back and vanish in that, too. Right, Brian? Yes, they okay. do. Okay. I would say not to just start watching them. Watch the all the earlier ones. Watch them in order. Okay. And then and right. that's it's what right. I that's that's my suggestion. It's the superhero series for gearheads. Is Paul Walker still in it? He's dead. CGI man. is. Is Paul Walker's brother still in it? There you go. Uh, let's see here. You know what? Like, I don't say shit to you guys. <laughs> like, I'm just asking. No, you're you're being a dick. <laughs> I know what saying. you're doing. I missed you, Brian. I missed you. Yeah. Still like you. Don't than piss him off, so he hangs up. We don't get to listen to his four through one. That's true. Uh, let's see. Number five for me. This is a tough one. I'm going Bohemian Rhapsody. I really liked it, and uh, I was. I going still to, haven't seen it, and I know it was a Cliff Notes version of their story. I get that. Uh, mostly, it's you know not completely about Queen, but it is. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I looking back on it, like it's one that has stayed with me for a while. Like man, and I go back and watch it again. I'm like, that is a really fun film. So may not be the best, but I've enjoyed it a lot. So. <laughs> One of my favorite. For it's not a fun film. Well, yeah, it is. Just the songs get you dancing. That, well, yeah, he <laughs> dies of AIDS. But besides that, <laughs> spoilers. It's it's a it's a pretty sad story. It, but it's when feel he's good at Live Aid, Jason. when he's at Live Aid and just fucking rocking it. Oh God, it's such yeah. A- but the whole premise about him being at Live Aid is <laughs> well. That's also where the movie and reality. Yes, absolutely. Did you, did Do you not know, fall in line? Did you know Good Girls, the TV series, is a comedy too, Brian? <laughs> it is not. Uh, Jim, what's your number five? My number five would be Jojo Rabbit. Oh, that was my number three. Ooh, oh, Lord. I, I forgot that even came out in the last five years. I Son still haven't that. seen that. So do I have to change my number three now? Nope, it's on the board. Tough oh, it. <laughs> Who directed that one, Jim? Uh, Taika Waititi. There it is. Okay. I knew it was somebody popular. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a good film. I, I'm really upset that I missed that one now. Well, Blake, what's your top number? five? What did you What did you have in your number five? Well, actually, I'm going to hobby it. JoJo was <laughs> tied with number five <laughs> and uh, 2018's uh, Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Okay. You've talked that about was, that, that before. Funny. You really like that one. Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, what's your number four? I super hobied it. Okay. I figured, hell with it. I'll just throw Wonder Woman 2017, Avengers Infinity, and uh, Avengers Endgame all together. Okay. Okay. Because I I've, I've I was feeling kind of WandaVision-y. Uh, I don't hate you for that. I tried to stay away from the superhero ones because I think a lot of them would have been on my top five. Uh, but I can see they're, they're, Well, they're an easy filler mm-hmm. when you don't have good five-quality top fives. <laughs> uh, Jim, what's your number four? I think there are plenty of good movies to choose from in this list, and I'll go with three, billboard, three billboards outside Ebbing's, uh, Missouri. That was on Arizona. my honorable mentions. Good job, Jim. Good job. That's a Missouri, Jim. Missouri. If you pronounce it. I. <laughs> but but that isn't how the the title is pronounced. The state is pronounced Missouri, but the title of the movie is outside Ebbing's of Missouri. Get out! No, it's not. Get out! Leave. That's how the director pronounced it. Do you spell? Do you say Cincinnati, Cincinnati? No, unless it was in a movie called Three Billboards Outside Cincinnati, <laughs> then I would. Just asking. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. My number four, uh, my only more, uh, my only, uh, Marvel film up there, MCU, Black Panther. Uh, loved Black Panther. 
Um, I knew that was going to be on your list. You know, so you I said, that's your that's your only Mar- only Marvel film on here. Uh, MCU, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Um, no, the reason is, uh, if you, what was the last one? Endgame? Was that the last Avengers or was it Infinity? It was Endgame, right? Endgame. Yeah. Endgame was the last one. I would put, uh, the last hour and a half of Endgame as my number one film of the last five years, but there was another two hours that was attached to it and it was okay, but the last, nothing could top the last hour and a half. So I couldn't put it on there. So, uh, Brian, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is Rambo: Last Blood. <laughs> that was the most recent, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Rambo yeah, five. In the last five years. <laughs> well, I couldn't remember. Okay. It's the only Rambo in the past five years. <laughs> is it? Correct. Okay. Yes. Otherwise, there would be more on Brian's list. <laughs> I bet you there's some Rockies coming up. Some over the top sequels. Is there any in there? No. Over the uh number four for you uh jeff uh number four uh, in my superhero portion of the list i have deadpool uh, not the second one oh, yeah. was that within the past five years 2016 wow okay. <laughs> Did, uh yeah. was the second one deadpool, good? second one's good but not as good so gotcha. i put the first deadpool on the list uh, fun little thing I saw online today that they uh, the writers or sorry the producers of Deadpool had to pay ten thousand dollars for his B. Arthur T shirt uh, that he wore in Deadpool to get the rights to yeah. it. <laughs> uh, number three, Jeff. Uh, well, it was Jojo Rabbit, but I uh, hobied that mm-hmm. with uh, Black Klansman. Heard nothing but good things about that one. It's very good. It was a good movie. The book was very good, too, if anyone's interested. Okay. Is that I a, might be interested if I can read. Is that a true story? Based on. Based on, based on yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Brian, number three. Uh, my number three would be uh, John Wick, two and three. Ah, aren't they the same movie? No. <laughs> I've yet to see that trilogy. Have you watched them? I not in, in their entireties, no. But I think it's always the same thing. He's running around shooting people. Well, well there, there, there there's a lot of movies attached to those. Why he's doing that? <laughs> there's a lot of movies. I know, there's of people something about running around shooting shooting people. <laughs> They're not considered the same movies. <laughs> I, not, not in the volume of those. All your favorite time travel films, Blake, are the same thing. They're just going time travel and fucking up the time. I know, it's the same thing. Uh, John Wick, Saving Private Ryan, same movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've wanted to see the Wick uh, films. I really do. Uh, the only thing I've seen is like that puppy get killed like five times every time I flip through TNT. I'm like, son of a bitch! Damn it! Uh, Spoiler! Sorry, my bad. I don't know what streaming service they're on, though. Uh, I believe they are on HBO. Yeah, I okay. think they're on HBO Max. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Uh, my number three is I hobied it. Uh, my animated films, uh, Coco and Moana. Uh, some of my favorite ones this year. Uh, is that the, your in the last only time. animated film? No. Uh, shut up, Jim. <laughs> 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 um. Yes, yeah, so yeah, Incredibles too, Jim. It's gonna be my number one. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, Should Coco. I just ruin it? Should I just make that my number three, Jason? So take off your number one. Incredible two. Incredibles two. <laughs> uh, yeah, Coco and Moana. Loved it. Um, yeah, so great films. I like the the um, cultural um, path that they're going with Disney. Like they're actually looking at the folklores of other cultures, and uh, they do a good job with them. So. Uh, Jim, what's your number three? My number three, I'll go with an animated film from 2018. <laughs> what's that? Uh, Isle of Dogs. Ah. <laughs> I have not seen that. That's... It's, it's, it's amusing. <laughs> Is that Anderson? Anderson? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's on Disney Plus, I think. 
Uh, I have no yes. idea. Yes, it is. I, I think I saw that when I was looking at things on Disney+. Plus. My uh, kids turned that on the other day, and I said, we don't do Wes Anderson in this house. Get the fuck out. <laughs> well, then you're missing a lot in that <laughs> house, because those are some good movies. I could have told you that. Uh, <laughs> Blake, what's your number three? All right. You know, this is uh, technically films in the past five years. Really goes back to 2016, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I hope cheated. so. I put Deadpool on mine. Exactly. But I cheated. And I said, you know what? I'll I'll do American math and I'll include 2015 because if you add five, you get 2020. Okay. So I did. Uh, I reached back and uh, you you talked about Taika and, and I went, yes, I loved the original movie mockumentary, What We Do in the Shadows, 2015. Ah, we'll allow that. Change approved for What We Do Thank in the you. Shadows. What year did you see it in? Uh. 2020. So okay. By, so by, <laughs> like, if you saw it in 2015, no, then, hold on. then I would I have to argue. But. Wait, hold on. After the TV series came out, so 2019. I watched it. So 2019. Okay. Uh, I didn't see it until 2020. But. Uh, uh, Jeff, uh, Blake's number two is going to be Porky's because he just saw it this weekend. <laughs> so it'll be fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's number two is Meatballs. So he's good. <laughs> Meatballs four. <laughs> You know, I you know what I would like to see if they did a Porky's remake based on b- today's standards. No. So I wonder uh, how boring that would be. Howard right. Stern had the re- the rights to Porky's for about ten years, and he was always trying to remake it uh, in the mid two thousand early two thousands to mid two thousands, and he said he could never get the script right in this day and age. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he missed his chance. Yeah. What's your number two, Blake? This is my number I don't two. Think I got the strip right in nineteen eighty, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dolomite is my name and fucking up motherfuckers is my game. Ah, Dolomite. Okay. Dolomite is my name. I enjoyed that movie a lot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't seen it. I can't judge. Jim, number two. My number two, I will go with knives out. No, uh-huh. That was my number two. Put it on the board. Unless I change it. No. <laughs> Just change it to 1917, Jeff. No one will know. No, no, I would. I haven't seen 1917. <laughs> okay, change it to Joker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number two is Rogue One. Uh, one of my favorite Star Wars films of all time. And oh, uh, damn it. Every time I... Was that your then, number one? What year did it come out? 2016. Shit. I missed it. One of my, you're the one that has a 2015 movie on the list. <laughs> yeah, so. I know. I'm really upset with myself. How did I miss Rogue One? Hey, Love yeah, Rogue I One. I agree. Rouge One. Actually, you know what? It was my number two. I hope it is Dolomite and Rogue One. I went for a lot of <laughs> went for a lot of reach there. Uh, number two for you, Brian. Uh, number two for me is Baby Driver. Ah, oh, heard good things about that one. I haven't seen it. So. Is, uh, is that like Fast and Furious because they drive a lot? Is that like that? <laughs> I was trying to make fun of Blake. Oh, don't turn me off, Brian. I was making fun of Blake. Oh, isn't that the dancing baby gets a car to drive? <laughs> I was making fun of Blake for once. And I get I get told. Okay, I see how it is. So now we aren't going to get his number one movie. Thanks, oh, he'll, be he'll be back. He'll be back. Uh, I was making fun of Blake, Brian. I took the high road. I was on your side. <laughs> he took the highbrow humor. Come on. If Jason you, keeps saying this high road like he's ever even seen what it looks like. Brian, I was. If you like Boss Baby, that's perfectly fine. It's a fine animated film. Uh, Jeff, what's your number one? <laughs> well, can I give my number two first? Whatever. I don't give a shit. Uh, I hope he's my number two. I had Knives Out, and I tied that with uh, Tenet. Oh, you saw that like six times. I saw it once. Oh. With the closed captioning on? I did not see it with closed <laughs> captioning. Um, and my number one film is uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, did you do that just to piss me off? <laughs> no, I have it written down as my number one. Yeah, it's mine too. Great film. Everybody see? knows it. Everybody knows it. Great film. 
Love wait, it. Wait, wait, that's what you, that's what your your number one is, Jason. I didn't figure it out. It was either that or <laughs> Boss Baby. Uh, it was a close call. Um, I don't want to have the same as Brian. Brian, what's your number one? Boss Baby. <laughs> I thought it was Baby Driver. <laughs> Boss Baby Driver? <laughs> Brian, what's your number one, buddy? Come on. Come on, if we Lux got you. If Lux could reach through the internet and slap you in the face, he would look at you, you with the side eye. slapped. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Brian. What's your number one? Uh, uh, number one, Atomic Blonde. Oh, is that Charlize? Yeah, it's Charlize. Uh. Yep. I haven't that seen one. it. Looks like one I would like to see, but for whatever reason, have not seen it. Okay. I don't I think, think I've ever seen that good. from beginning to end. I've seen parts of it. I forgot that came out. In overlapping parts. Uh, but not enough Charlie's parts. Hmm. Number, she was in Kubo and the Two Strings that was on my list. So no, I don't think she was naked in that, though. No, she wasn't. Uh, well, no. the character she played might have been. What? You watch it, are you monkey? watching anime porn? <laughs> she played a monkey. I mean, come oh. on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number one is Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, greatest superhero film of all time. Uh, Jim, what's your number one? Uh, I was thinking about going with Cats, but I had to have watched it to put it on my list. So you <laughs> said you went with Cats or the Bubble the... Edition. <laughs> yeah, Bubble Edition. edition. Uh, <laughs> instead, I am going to go with Alita Battle Angel. Yeah. You and uh, Sean. Yeah. You guys have that one on Sean's list. Yeah. Uh, number one for you, uh, Blake. My number one, I don't think it's on anybody's list, and I'm kind of surprised, but that's okay because I, I really liked it. The Who's Last I? Jedi? No. Midsummer. None of us I have seen it. it so. Yeah, is I that, know. Is that the one that's filmed in like July? Yeah, <laughs> and I think it's pronounced midsummer. Midsummer, like massage. Oh, I'm thinking of something different. <laughs> no, midsummer, because I, I, you know, once again, you know, the uh, cinematography and I think a lot of the visualizations were really good in it too. Worked really well with the movie. Well, if you. Want to talk about the best movie visually and cinematography? You have to go into my uh, uh, honorable mentions here. That's good. Uh, that's, some honorable mentions. I have two more honorable mentions. Well, it's not your turn, Blake. Says, Simmer down. I know. I'll see if anybody's got them. <laughs> my honorable mention is La La Land. Ah, uh, did it lose out on the top five? It did. It didn't uh, make the top five. Shame. Now, if I saw it, I might even like it better, and it might have made the top five, but. I had to throw that in there for Scam Jeff. Anything else on your honorable mentions? That was it. Okay. Brian? Or the other movies I snuck into my list when other people stole them off of it. Uh, uh, honorable mentions for me, I had uh, Creed 1 and 2 and Sicario 1 and 2. Creed uh, Creed was on my honorable mentions. Just missed out. Creed was 2015. Well, oh, Blake Math. Well, American Math, it still counts. Blake Math. <laughs> Right. I retract my honorable mention of Creed and replace it with Creed 2, please. I, re- I, I retract nice. my Creed and I go with Creed 2 as well then. <laughs> if you want. Jimmy Guy, honorable I'll, mention? Uh, I'll give you back your Creed 2 and I'll double down on Creed. Oh. Uh, I believe that was uh, 2015. It's ineligible. <laughs> <laughs> Not to new math. Uh, I will go my honorable mention, uh, Dunkirk. Cinematography was fantastic. Okay. Yeah, it was Lo- good. Logan. Mm. Uh, that was okay. Uh, uh, let's see what else do I have. Uh, uh, the New Mutants. Okay. <laughs> it was good. Not and, uh, top and seven. And Bumblebee, because it was the only uh, Transformers movie worth watching. I, <laughs> You know what, Jim? I agree. It was not a horrible <laughs> film. Is it the only Transformer movie in the past five years? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, Jim, I, I actually enjoyed Bumblebee, but John Cena was awful in it. Uh, you could have just cut him out or been fine. Yes. But was he better than Mark Wahlberg in I the fourth? I, uh... I think I found a Transformer. I'm Mark Wahlberg. 
Uh, let's see. Blake, what's your honorable mention? All right. Uh, uh, come, coming in off of uh, New Mutants and uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, uh, The Witch, I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, of course, uh, more cinematography since we're on that kick and visualizations and sound. Uh, Blade Runner 2049. Yep. I need to finish watching that. Uh, but well, uh, yeah. When you were saying you're t- picking up on on a tale of joy, I thought you were going to go with Split. You know, I just went, after I just said that in my head, I started trying to do the math and said, "Wait a minute, was what year was Split?" Because I really enjoyed that movie too. I think that was 2016. All right, it's on my honorable li- mention list now. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so the, so you're saying Anna Taylor Joy is like the top actress of the last five years. She's the Queen's Gambit. Ah, bum bum. Uh, honorable mentions for me. I had it. Uh, I was trying to think of the my favorite horror film of the last five years. That was probably it. Get it? Are you combining or both? Uh, I've never seen the second one yet. I want to, but I, just, I haven't yet. It too, the new I think one. You can mm-hmm. watch it streaming somewhere. Yeah, HBO Max. I had, yeah, I had a hard time liking that. Though, Just watch but... it. Make the kids watch it. Sit down. Make a family day of it. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> did you like the first one, Blake? I no, I missed no. it. I ended up watching the second one and <laughs> I and I watch just watching the second one. I'm like, man, this is really hard. All first right, one whatever. was good. Uh, yeah, when they were older. <laughs> Uh, I had uh, Creed or Creed Two, uh, Rocket Man, the Elton John biography. Uh, it was okay. I liked it. Uh, and Jurassic World, just because I love dinosaurs. So there you go. Five. See, see, Brian, he gives you grief about your Fast and Furiouses or whatnot, and he not. puts Jurassic World on the list. I do not give him grief about Fast and Furious. You know, I would watch. Uh, I, yep, would watch uh, I would watch. I would watch Pee Wee Island. What? <laughs> Isn't it Jurassic Pee Wee? Isn't it the one? Oh, yeah. The, Jurassic, oh, the Pee Wee Island that we put on our History of Bad Ideas Facebook page. Yeah. That thing was creepy yeah. as hell. <laughs> <laughs> la, la, la. They replaced dinosaurs with Pee Wee Hermans. If uh, Go to our Facebook page. It's amazing. When he has the tape on his face going through the door. Oh, my God. That's creeping me out. And I love how he's riding a bike as the t- instead of the T-Rex. <laughs> Let's go faster. Let's go faster. <laughs> Great, great thing. Uh, let's see. Number five. Uh, we had lots of uh, lots of listener feedback. Uh, get through these. Doctor number one. He had emoji movie. Do we, do we have any movies that we haven't listed yet? That's what I want to know. Oh yeah, I'm anxious to hear. Emoji movie. Transformers oh. last night. God, see, there is another serious. Transformers. He's not. Oh, serious. the last night did come out during the last five years. Uh, boo and hey Jeff, boo too. A media <laughs> Halloween. Uh, Warcraft and X Men Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix. Uh, I think he's being facetious. Uh, yeah, troll. We said best movies, not worst. Randall. No, it's your your top five favorite films. Yeah, not best. Oh. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Not the best five. Uh, Randy at Randall. Holt, or, I'm sorry, Randall Holt. RJ Holt six six six. He's not evil. He's just handled that way. Uh, number five, Rogue One. Uh, number four, Jumanji. Welcome to the jungle. Uh, number three, Deadpool. Number two, Wonder Woman. And number one, Thor Ragnarok. Uh, honorable mentions, Logan, Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, colon, Homecoming, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Uh, P.S. I pretty much only watch Marvel Star Wars films. That's okay. Uh, Kevin at Cincy Explorer had Deadpool, Get Out, uh, 1917, Joker, and Parasite. Not bad films there. Uh, from everything I've heard. Uh, honorable mentions, Black Klansman, Avengers Endgame, and Free Solo. Great documentaries, Free Solo. Great documentary. Is is that where they freed Han Solo from being frozen in carbon night? Get out. I, yep. think, I, I think I've seen that in the 1983, I think. But they, they did an entire documentary about how it actually happened. Oh. Okay. And how he lived yeah. through it. It was very well, interesting about the whole process, Jim, about how they do carbonite and how it was founded. I, yes. Uh, Jar Jar Binks screwed it up in a lab, and it just went from there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, number five, uh, Steve at Everything I Learned from Movies. Uh, great guys. Him and Izzy. Check them out. 
Untidy Venus on uh, Etsy. Use Hobie Pod. Now hold, now hold on. For 15% off. Has Nicolas Cage made five movies in the, the past None five None of them years? have Nicolas Cage. He made, <laughs> he made five movies in the last <laughs> five months. Well, I've, been, <laughs> I've been waiting to see Color Out of Space for the past year now. And every time I go to watch it, they want to charge me five ninety nine. I'm like, nope. <laughs> Nope. Sure, nope. it's on Showtime or Epix or whatever else uh, you have. I'm a Lovecraft fan, and I'm, I'm like, I, Nick Cage is okay, but I'm like, I want to see this movie. But for over a year now, they still have a charge on it. I want to know why it's not free yet. If I'm paying five ninety nine, I'm going to get into the theater and get the cinema experience, not my couch. Jeez. Correct. Uh, Steve had Invisible Man, Get Out, Avengers Infinity War. Black Panther, and for Brian, Hobbs and Shaw. There you go. Uh, Max Fury Road will be number one, but I think it's just outside the time frame. Doesn't matter. We, you can put it in there. Uh, Doug, number one fan. I'm not having Star Wars or Marvel on my list. Uh, he has Patriot's Day, Solly, Knives Out, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, another one of those, and Moana. So there you go. Uh, he said he would put Lost Je- or Last Jedi as one through five, but he wanted to get rid of all the Star Wars films just to make it fair. Uh, there you go. <laughs> you know, Jason, hmm? I am disappointed you didn't put Fantasy Island on your list. I get to see it. I'm, wa- I'm, not, I'm not paying for it. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I keep waiting. Oh, uh, God. And we got a couple more real quick ones here. Chris Richardson. Good day, mate. Uh, fighting with my family. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't finish that one. Uh, Bad Samaritan, uh, Hidden Figures, uh, Hacksaw Ridge, and Joker. Uh, Brad Hargis. Oh, from the cinema, guys. Don't even do it. Uh, he Logan. It. Here you go, Blake. Color Out of Space. <laughs> really? Yes. Uh, he paid for it? I guess. Atomic Blonde, Rogue One, and Batman v Superman. Ugh. And Joey Creary, he had Ex Machina. Ex Machina. <laughs> Mad Max, That's, colon for Fury is that Road. Where they do the Macarena? Yes. <laughs> Ex Machina. Ex Machina. Uh, Spider-Man. I think you have to do like four shots for that terrible. Uh, yeah. After. Very disappointed with myself that I stopped drinking. <laughs> Spider-Man colon into the Spider-Verse Split and the Big Short He said there's no particular order But all good for uh, viewing for many tastes Sinister almost made my list though too So there you go Big Short was good Yeah, 2015 uh, I thought of that one I checked that one out And I went, oh, just makes the cutoff December 2015 uh, Bad idea of the week uh, Number 31 Being a Instagram influencer uh, bad idea number 32, being on TikTok. Uh, so there you go. Um, <laughs> titles for the show. Jim, what do you got? Um, nothing. Best color man in the business. <laughs> uh, Blake, what do you got? No, uh, nothing. Second best color man in the business. <laughs> uh, Brian, what do you got? Uh, loophole. Add shit at the end. Uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Those are the only two things that I wrote down. Okay, that would be three. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> new man, uh, Jeff. I have uh, reliving out our Twitter conversation, <laughs> uh, like cobwebs, <laughs> uh, the heart of rock and roll. Uh, look at those cute lazies. And three billboards outside of Cincinnati. <laughs> God. Uh, I have no one is eating on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if no one is eating on this podcast, please give us five stars. <laughs> I was dead at that age. Uh, <laughs> we've never been highbrow. Stupid son. Uh, and we're going to need subtitles. So what do we got here? What do we like? I like that no one is eating on this podcast. If you're advertising that no one's eating, that would be good. Uh, Anyone else? 
<laughs> uh, you could put, I walked away for 10 minutes and no one noticed. <laughs> <laughs> well, your thing didn't disappear on the... Jim, I didn't turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, that's the name of your your autobiography. Let's save it for that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I hadn't heard Jim in a while. Nope, he's still on. That's why I kept looking, making sure he's okay. <laughs> uh, what do we got, Jeff? Which one do you like? I like three billboards outside of Cincinnati. I don't know how to spell Cincinnati. I can't. <laughs> You spell it just like Cincinnati, but it's pronounced Cincinnati. Okay, fine. We're doing three billboards outside Cincinnati. Roger <laughs> says goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Walking Dead to Talking Heads, from comic books to TV sets. There's a history. Not so bad. There's the history. It's the history of bad. So bad. The history of bad. It's bad. The history of bad ideas. Oh, yes. You are listening to a hobie.